Hi, um, Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me today. I'm talking today about vitamin D and COVID-19. Why am I talking about it? Largely because this has gotten some attention recently from some research that has come out that was published in the BMJ. And I'll explain what they were saying, but essentially they didn't see that there was much benefit with supplementation. And so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because um, it's very important for you to understand the relevance of vitamin D in your day-to-day -day life. It, it is quite a remarkable, um, essential um, nutrient. And essential nutrient means that we cannot make it ourselves. We either have to get it through sunlight or through diet. The body cannot make it. And so therefore it's, it is essential, we need it. And some of the main things that it does is that it strengthens bones, that's what everybody hears about. It balances immunity. And what that means is that it has an impact on the immune system in the sense that one, it helps the immune system to function better. And two, it helps the immune system from becoming overbalanced and becoming autoimmune. So it kind of centers the immune system. It increases muscle strength, it reduces cancer risk, and there are quite a few other things that it does. It has a very broad impact on the body. And one of the big ones that I haven't put in here that I'll be focused on is about clotting. It has an impact on that as well. And I'm going to come to that when it comes to the context as to why vitamin D is important in the context of COVID-19. So the first thing, let's get to the paper and see what they did. So this here is the paper. And what they were looking at is the effect of a test and treat approach to vitamin D supplementation. And um, this here was looking at um, all cause respiratory tract infection and COVID-19. And this is what they were looking at in order to try and understand this. And, um, you know, I am just looking at my screen here and I am wondering if you are seeing my screen jumping, but if it's if you're not, that's great. I can see my screen otherwise, but it makes an impact as to whether or not you can read what I am putting on the screen. So if somebody could just put a message and let me know if they are able to see this clearly with what I'm showing, that would be very useful because otherwise it would help me in terms of understanding how to explain these concepts. So the main point about it is that they offered or they, they offered 6,000 people um, a vitamin D test of which they had 3,100 participants. What was most inter interesting in the study, and when you look at this here, 2,958 2 accepted of which 86.3% had low levels, really, really important. And it shows you just how prevalent vitamin D is in the population, and this is in the UK. And so it shows there's a very significant prevalence of vitamin D deficiency across the population. So what they did is they then split that into two groups and they gave one group 800 international units and another group 3,200 international units. And this is the image as to where the starting point was. And you can see this a bit better. You can see, and I'll get my, um, my pointer in place. You can see here that what they were looking at was the baseline here. And this is below 50. The cutoff is 75. And you can see that the majority of people are quite low. After supplementation, that's 800 international units, the majority went above the normal and the 3,200 went even higher. And so they were looking at these two groups to see whether or not there was any difference between them with regards to the supplementation. And effectively, what they were finding was, and this is the summary of their findings, they found there was no significant difference in severity of acute COVID-19 or prolonged symptoms of COVID-19 between those randomized either the lower or the higher dose compared to the no offer group. 
Now, I'll not get into the details of all the issues around this study. Um, and you have to remember that there are a number of confounders, including the fact that it, I think about 89% of them were vaccinated during the study. So that could have had an impact on infection rates and so on. But the point is, is that that's not the real value of vitamin D. And this is why I decided that I would do this talk. Because people are getting confused. They are thinking that vitamin D is going to protect you directly against getting COVID-19. The way how vitamin D works, it may have that effect, but that's not the real important thing that is relevant in the context of severe COVID-19. And this is the bit why I decided that I would share with you some important information so that you understand why it is relevant. Okay, so the first thing that you have to understand is what kills you in COVID-19 is breathing. So this here is an image of a person breathing and their lungs going and the air is going in and out. You have in that lung capacity about 2.6 liters in the average person, of which when you're just doing your normal breathing, you only use about 600 mils of, um, of air going in and out in normal breathing. And so the vast proportion of your lungs is not needed. It's almost reserve space. And within that context, how is it that you can end up with a person who has severe COVID-19 and ends up like this on a ventilator and yet they still die? Now, this is the bit that is very important. So if we take you back to that breathing episode here, your lungs, and actually before I take the breathing episode, I'm going to show you a very important piece of the puzzle. This is a picture of the alveoli in the lungs. Those are those little bubbles, those balls here are the alveoli where the air goes. Red is the artery, the blue is the vein, and inside is the air coming in, and it's exchanging here with the artery. So it's a capillary. Um, where you see one red blood cell coming through. And so these alveoli, there are about 480 million of them in your lungs, okay? And that number means that every one of them functions with their own little artery. And this is how you get oxygen around your body. Now, within that context, what you have to know is that in severe COVID-19, what causes the breathing problem that needs somebody on a ventilator is that these little capillaries and arteries get blocked with microthrombi, okay? And these clots in these arteries prevent exchange of oxygen. So here is how the numbers work. When you think of somebody who is on a ventilator, if you have somebody who has severe COPD where they need oxygen um, at home, those people will have about 20% of their lung capacity left. So that means 80% of it is already gone. They can barely manage at home with a little bit of oxygen. They have about 20%. By the time you reach a state where you need oxygen on a ventilator, you have about 10% of your lungs left. That means the rest of the lung capillaries into the alveoli are likely to be blocked with little microthrombi, okay? Why am I emphasizing this? This is absolutely essential when we understand an important thing about vitamin D. And here it is with, um, let me just get my, my slides together. Vitamin D is a critical part of preventing thrombosis. Now, this was an interesting study done in China. This was in 2017. Low vitamin D levels are associated with the development of deep vein thrombo um, thromboembolic events in patients with ischemic stro stroke. So there are two things here. They found that of the patients who had been admitted with strokes, 80% of them had low levels of vitamin D. Additionally, of those patients who had stroke, they found that the incidence of deep vein thrombosis was significantly higher compared to the other population. And so what that means is that an, an essential part of how vitamin D operates 
is that it reduces the chances of making clots. And this is why for all clotting events, you check vitamin D levels because it increases the risk of making clots. And the mechanism is likely to be related to fibrinogen. If you have low vitamin D, you have high fibrinogen. And fibrinogen is what the body needs to make clots. And so when you have high fibrinogen and low vitamin D, there is a higher risk for making clots. And so therefore what it means is in severe COVID-19, the difference between life and death could be only 2% of the alveoli. And if you have adequate levels of vitamin D and you have therefore the ability of less of these alveoli to be blocked, that's where it makes a difference with regards to mortality in severe COVID-19. And so by studying whether or not it prevents infection, it gives a sense that vitamin D isn't important. It's a very important part of keeping healthy because your body needs it. The important thing that I would want to say to people is this. There is always a balance between too little and too much. Based on the study in the UK, you can see effectively that 86% of people who are vitamin D deficient. And of the people who weren't, none of them were anywhere near a toxic range. And you can see these baselines here. The closest they have here is just about 150. And the toxic level is up above 400. So you can see this whole cohort could have benefited from vitamin D supplementation, even if they did not know what their serum levels were. And that's the principle. In the context of short-term supplementation, vitamin D, of course, will make a difference. Why wouldn't you do it? I think what they're trying to get across is that vitamin D is not a miracle cure for COVID-19. And so there is a concern that people will only take vitamin D and probably not get vaccinated, which is where the big concern is. That's a different issue. But let us not degrade the importance of vitamin D simply because it interferes with the narrative that is being put forward. Vitamin D is important and my advice to everyone is at least to make sure if you haven't got your levels checked to make sure that you are at least on some degree of supplementation going into the winter months and importantly get it checked. Those are the simple principles that I would operate by. So that's why I'm encouraging you. Remember, vitamin D in severe COVID-19 is about reducing microthrombi. And therefore, that gives people a chance to survive the event, which is the most important thing at the end of the day. I hope that you found this valuable. And I hope that you will be able to follow me. Uh, look out for my Substack. Um, I'll be sharing more valuable thoughts on that. The link is below. And um, until I share some more important information with you, have a great evening.